Newton's third law says that all forces come about between interactions between two objects. And in the course of that interaction between two objects, there are two forces that are created. These two forces are on the two objects of the interaction. One of the forces will be on the first object, and the second, the second force will be on the second of the two objects. And what the third law says is out of this interaction, these two forces are created, and they will be of exactly equal strength, but of exactly opposite direction. I want to illustrate that with the uh, little glider here. I have a, a cannon and uh, a cannon ball. So those are my two objects. And I'm going to create an interaction between these two objects deep down in the cannon barrel uh, when I trigger the spring, re uh, spring release to fire the cannon ball. So the, the two objects are the glider, the cannon, and the cannon ball. The interaction occurs down in here when I uh, fire the cannon. And it's going to fire this cannonball then at tremendous velocity off here to the side. So let me load the cannon, put it down in here. We'll do it on the air track so that we can remove the friction on the uh, surface of the air track and uh, see what happens in the absence of, of this additional force of friction on the, uh, on, the, on the glider. So let me try it. And now I have to trigger the uh, cannon to fire the cannonball off to one side. Now in that interaction, in that interaction, there was a force created on the cannonball. And that propelled the cannonball, accelerated from rest into motion off in this direction. So the first question is, what is it that exerted a force on the cannonball? And the answer is, the cannon exerted a force on the cannonball, and that caused the cannonball to accelerate in this direction. The third law says, and you can almost sing it as a song, if the cannon exerts a force on the cannonball, then the cannonball exerts a force on the cannon in the opposite direction, but with exactly the equal strength. So if you kind of use my, use my arms as... as uh, indicators of the, uh, of the force, then the cannon exerts a force on the cannonball, and the length of my arm indicates the strength of the force, then the cannonball exerts a force on the cannon in the opposite direction, and if my arms happen to be the same length, that indicates the forces are of the same strength, but exactly opposite in direction. So out of this interaction, we created these two forces. The forces um, act on different objects, and uh, these forces both cause the objects to accelerate. Of course, we saw the cannonball go that direction, and we saw the cannon move off in this direction. Now the question arises, if I exert exactly the same strength of force on these two objects, cannon and cannonball, if I exert exactly the same strength of force, do they accelerate in exactly the same way? And the answer to that is no, because the acceleration depends on two things. It depends on the strength of the force, but it also depends upon the mass of the object that's being accelerated. And these two objects have quite different masses. Which of the two objects has the larger mass? The larger the mass, the less the acceleration for the same strength of force. So we ask ourselves, which one accelerated the least under the influence of those forces of exactly the same strength? And the answer to that question is, the cannon accelerated the least, therefore had the greater mass of the two objects.